Quick look today at a portable single slot charger. This is the Oztuff Smart Universal Battery Charger. Now I bought this on eBay for about four pounds and it came from the Far East. Took a while to turn up, but I thought I'd give it a try. It's a budget charger. Now have a quick look at the front of the box. Not much to see here, just some uh, very basic information. And on the side, that's the manufacturer information. Nothing on the other side much, but on the back you do get some vague instructions. There's no instruction manual with this. You can see the display there, you have LEDs, and it's telling you about changing the charging current and the battery voltages, pretty straightforward. Now the build on the unit is actually not too bad. Doesn't feel quite as good as the Claris K1, but the plastics are decent. The slider's a little bit thinner, but reasonably smooth, perfectly acceptable. Now let's have a look at the display. You can see the LEDs for the voltages, three different types of lithium, and the 1.2 volt for nickel metal or nickel cadmium. On the top part, we have the USB output, the micro USB input, and nothing to see on the rest of the case. There are no rubber pads on the underside, just the screw holes. And moving closer to look at the sticker, and you can see some of the batteries it supports up to the two 6650s, the larger cells, and AAs and C size batteries too. The micro USB cable is a decent length, about 80 centimeters long I measured it. And we'll just plug that in. Pretty decent fit, fits okay. And um, we're going to put it into the uh, amp and voltage tester that I have, the USB tester. So this is USB powered. Just get the indicators come up when you power it on. Let's test a few batteries. This is a 18650. Now, what I noticed is you can, as soon as you insert, you can adjust any of the three voltages for the lithium cells. It defaults to the 3.7 volt as standard. So if you have lithium ion phosphate or another type, you'll have to manually go in and change that, which is the ideal way of doing things. Now I've finished the charge on this cell. What I'm going to do now is test the termination voltage. For this test to make any sense, you have to do it immediately that it's finished charging. Otherwise the voltage is dropped and we've got 4.2, 4.21. So that's a decent charge. For the nickel metal hydride cell I was testing, it's using pulse charging, which is the ideal method. Now that's fully charged. And we'll test the voltage on that. Again, you have to do this quite quickly after it's finished charging. Again, a good result with that. So nothing wrong with the charging speeds. Now what I'm doing is going to try plugging in a few devices to the USB output. I've got a lithium cell in there, fully charged, and I didn't have a lot of luck with that device. didn't work. I managed to get a very slow speed off of another cable and managed to get some kind of a charge into the S1R baton that I'm testing here but not much, uh, it should charge a bit quicker than that. So not a very good performance from the USB port, not exactly sure why that is. And it also reported the battery was low when it wasn't very low at all. Now, the problem that I noted with this was even though you have that big one amp button, it doesn't actually do anything other than change the voltage for lithium cells. It would default to the 1.2 volts for the nickel metal hydride. So I was unable to change the charging current on this charger for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why that is but that was the case. So you're stuck with pretty much one amp charging for lithium ion, which is a perfectly decent charging speed for some cells. As you can see here, I have a 26650 inserted, fits okay. One amp charging or just a touch under is a pretty good charging rate for a cell of that type. And likewise with the 18650, that's a pretty decent charging speed and very safe. Now I have a smaller lithium cell here just to see what it does. I've already determined that I can't change the charging speed, at least by the button. And again, it's putting out an amp, which is a bit too high for a cell of that size and capacity. I move back to the Olight 18650. So I didn't have any problems with the larger cells. Um, looking on the back here, you'll see that it is just listing one amp as an output. So whether or not they borrowed a few parts from a different charger and put a different box on there, I'm not exactly sure, but you can't change the charging current unless you put it into, say, a laptop or PC USB 2 port where you can drop it down to 500 uh, milliamps instead of the one amp or higher. So overall score with this one, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. It's acceptable for larger lithium ion cells for charging, does a decent job on the charging. Uh, nickel metal hydride, again, AA is perfectly fine. The triple A's, um, 700 milliamps, I measured the highest current, so that's a touch high for triple A's. 
but perfectly fine for AA cells. You can accept the three different voltages as well, which is a bonus. And it is quite a small compact unit that doesn't cost a lot. So the major downside with this is you cannot change the charging current for some reason. And the current's a bit too high for some cells. And the power bank function wasn't very good either. You also don't get a warning if you insert it the wrong way around, but it doesn't attempt to charge, so it's fairly safe. Possibly worth a look if you're bargain hunting for larger cells, but I personally think you'd be better off with the Claris K1. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. Don't forget to subscribe, or I'll be looking at other similar products like this in the future.